This is the fifth section of the chi-square tests chapter and here we're going to be looking at contingency tables. Now this is basically like two-way tables. Okay, so like two-way tables and the test we are doing is to see if um, there is independence or an association between two sets of variables. Okay, so the test is to see if there is independence independence or no association between the two sets of data Okay, so for example, if I had a, uh, a two-way table where it was, let's say, people that wear glasses, here, yeah, number of people that wear glasses, so either they do wear glasses or they don't wear glasses, and I had some uh, values in there. And let's say this was against people that drink tea so they either do drink tea or they don't drink tea and I want to say right oh, I want to find out is there an association between people that do drink tea and don't drink tea okay so let's say I put some figures in so it's just like a two-way table like this where we're going to have all our sort of totals um, right at the end so I'll just add another row like this so we'll have our totals of 20 here 20 here and 40 here now the way I work out whether there's an association between people wearing glasses and people drinking tea so for example uh, do people that wear glasses more than likely drink tea is I'm going to work out what I would expect each cell to contain now the way that i work out what i expect each cell to contain is by using this formula okay the expected frequency is the row, row total times the column total divided by the row the grand total so for example in this cell here if i wanted to work out what the expected frequency is the row total is 20 sorry, the row total is 19, the column total of that cell is 20, divided by the grand total of 40, so let's do that, so it'd be 19 times 20, divided by 40, and I get 9.5, so this would be an expected value, I'll write them in blue, 9.5, for this cell here, the expected total would be the row total, so that would be 21 times by the column total 20 divided by the grand total which is 40, so I'd expect that to be 10.5. For this cell here, this one here, um, I would expect that to be 19 times 20 divided by 40. Now what does that give us? Oh, we've done that already, that's 9.5. And then for this cell here, uh, 21 times by 20 divided by 40. So, oh, that would also give us 10.5 as well. So these numbers in blue represent what we'd expect to get. So these are the expected frequencies we are going to use to work out x squared. Yeah, so x squared is going to be our observed squared over our expected. So in this case, if I start with the first cell, so 7 squared over 9.5 plus next cell would be observed 12 over expected 9.5 plus next cell down which would be 13 squared over 10.5 plus 
plus um, 8 squared over 10.5. Okay, I will take away the number of observations, which is the grand total, which is 40. Just about got enough space there. That would give me x squared. And just like before, I'm going to compare that with a critical value from the chi-squared table. Now, degrees of freedom. Now, to find the degrees of freedom, we basically take the, the width and the height of the table. We subtract one from each of the numbers and we multiply. So, h is going to be the um, number of rows. And k is going to be the number of columns. Let's spell columns right. And to get the number of degrees of freedom, we could do the number of rows minus one times by the number of columns minus one. So in the example that we're doing here, the number of uh, rows is two, the number of columns is two, so the number of degrees of freedom would be one. So I would look up um, x squared, uh, chi squared, sorry, with one degree of freedom and probably 5% significance level to find my critical value. And then I make the same choice about h zero, except always reject. Okay, conduct a goodness of fit at the 5% significance level on well basically the data in the table given below so what you can see is the second table contains our expected frequencies and that was calculated by doing the row total times the column total times the column total and then divided by the grand total and you can see the working there so that bit's already been worked out for us so now um, we will do h0 h1 and all the rest so h0 will be that there there is no association and this would always be the same for h0 in these contingent tables, there is no association between the uh, score and its pass rate, which is what this table is about. Or that you could say that the pass rate and the score uh, are independent of each other. And H1 will be that there is an association. So by saying that there isn't an association, basically we're, basic, we're saying that the values are close to what we, we would expect. In other words, x squared would be low, below the significance level. So now we're gonna work out x squared. So it's gonna be all of the observed squared over it's expected. So there's the first cell and then second cell, the third cell, then the three cells at the bottom. Uh, where are we? Yep, 26 squared, 25.67. Then observed of 12 over 14 plus um, 32, that's the last observed, over 30.33 minus the number of observations, which is 120. Let's go work that out. Okay, so we'll get uh, 120.9165482 minus 120. So we get no point nine one six 
five that's quite low and um, we need to work out the number of degrees of freedom so in this case we have two rows uh, sorry three rows get my rows and columns mixed up three rows and two columns no hang on two rows and three columns two rows rows go across columns go down don't they okay so that's going to be one times two so um, two degrees of freedom so we're going to look up chi squared uh, with two degrees of freedom and five percent significance level and uh, that will give us right near the top of the table five percent I get five point nine nine one okay so what does that mean that means that my value of uh, x squared or my 0.9165 is less than so it's not spread far from what we expect um, that means that we accept eight zero okay the values are pretty much what we'd expect them to be except eight zero um, so we can say uh, there is um, not or there is evidence to suggest there is uh, no association between the school and its was it pass criteria one? Whatever that means between its pass. Oh, just between its pass, between its pass rate. Okay, during the trial of a new drug, 60 volunteers out of 200 treated with a drug. Those who experienced relief of their symptoms and those did not were recorded in the table is a suitable test to see if there's any association between the treatment of the drug uh, and relief of the symptoms use five percent significance level so h0 um, there is no association between the treatment of the drug and relief there's no association between treatment and relief and H1 there is an association between the treatment and relief right so step number one we want a table showing the expected uh, frequencies and remember the way that we do that is going to be the uh, row total times the column total divided by the grand total and we need to do that for each cell so I'll do a table over here and um, again pause it so that you can just see the completed um, table so I'll just put the headings in relief no relief and the totals here
Okay, so there's the completed table. I've highlighted the expected values. So now I can work out um, x squared and um, I will take each of my observed squared. I've just put the expected, each of my observed squared. So I'll start with 10 over what was expected there um, plus 50 that was ex uh, observed, expect 45, 40 was observed, expected 35, 100 was observed, I expected 105, okay and then I subtract the number of observations, so that give me x squared, and that will give me a value of 3.174 and then it's 6 that so now we will look up our critical value chi squared now for the number of degrees of freedom I have um, two rows and I have two columns okay so just one degree of freedom and we're looking at 5% significance level. So when we look that up, just find it in the table, right at the top, uh, we get 3.841. So that's 3.841. So conclusion time, they're very close, aren't they? But my 3.1746 is less than this critical value just okay so what does that mean it means that um, I accept H0 and my conclusion is that um, there is no association between uh, treatment and relief. Right, should now be able to do exercise 6C on pages 116 to 119. So this is where we're dealing with like these two-way tables. If we want to work out the expected value in each cell, expected value for each cell in this two-way table, then we do the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So you do that for each cell. Now. Um, if we want to find the number of degrees of freedom, it's the um, number of rows minus one times by the number of columns minus one.